Hello everybody and welcome back. I am KRX. We're going to do another sort of uh, getting started guide and SWOT analysis looking at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for a country. Uh, this time looking at Brandenburg. So one of the things is a lot of the uh, SWOT analysis runs that we've done have been for recent campaigns on the Twitch channel that we've completed. We go back, we look through the opening uh, sequence and the opening moves and getting the country all set up and everything. It's like a little sort of quick start guide. Um, Brandenburg is actually the very first country we ever played on the Twitch channel like two years ago, maybe even a little bit more than two years ago. Um, and I wanted to go back and actually have uh, sort of quick start guides for all of the countries that we already have um, completed on the on the YouTube channel through a timeline and final thoughts video. And also uh, a sort of, you know, the timeline and final thoughts video on the YouTube is based on the Twitch campaign, the full Twitch campaign that we did uh, at the time. So there's a bunch of backlog nations I want to go do that I've already played, right? These are nations I've already played. Some of the SWOT analysis videos are countries that I haven't played before, and those are just random countries, and those are essentially trying to develop a strategy on the fly without experience. But here we have some, some experience, although to be fair, uh, Brandenburg has changed quite a bit because of the recent patch, uh, sort of uh, giving a lot of special um, mission trees and stuff like that to a lot of the uh, HRE nations and European nations and stuff like that. And, and just things of this area and the region and stuff have changed quite a bit. So Brandenburg is actually one of the probably more recommended uh, HRE nations uh, for newer players. You can absolutely play Brandenburg as a new player. It's kind of like, uh, I mean, Bohemia, Brandenburg. Uh, Brandenburg might be a little bit uh, easier than Bohemia just because Bohemia is buttery, uh, uh, bordering uh, Austria. And Austria will show aggression, aggression towards Bohemia occasionally. Bohemia tends to be kind of the black sheep anyways. They kind of do their own thing. They oppose Austria and some other things. We are a country that can kind of like uh, rise up and take power sort of alongside Austria or and then eventually replace Austria when the time is right and become the emperor ourselves and, and a number of other things. But we don't have the initial responsibilities of Austria right at the start of the game. We are not the uh, empire that uh, the emperor that is Austria indeed. We are actually an elector. We could vote for ourselves. We could vote for Austria as well. In fact, I wonder if the, we could try to get an alliance with Austria. They like us. So let's get the alliance with Austria. I think that's a done deal. Having the alliance with Austria is just going to be a good thing. Before we make too many other decisions, we might want to actually look at our uh, internal situation here, especially our missions, right? Because those missions are going to be kind of crazy looking. I've not looked at these before, actually. Like I said, I haven't played uh, Brandenburg since the update. And the update has changed quite a bit of stuff. So this is to own a new mark, own a core new mark in uh, Drom Dromberg. Where's Dromberg? Oh, oh, both of these here. Aren't there missions? Wait a second. Are these? Um... No, we don't have any claims or cores on these. I thought there was a mission that just gave us those. To be honest, I, I or not a mission, but an event. That's how it worked like a couple years ago. Something happened in this, which is like flip over to you randomly. Um, but I'm wondering if instead we have to do something to trigger. Uh, that event now. Permanent claims. Permanent claims. Global dominance. Okay, this is something else entirely. Uh, this is like for building a... Um, it is the defender of the faith. At least two. Currently one. Electors backing brand. Oh, right. Nice. So we can actually get some people backing us for emperorship. We can actually gain uh, extra diplomats uh, for 15 years after a diplomatic relationship. This can help us actually, it looks like, achieve emperorship that's actually kind of neat at 50 percent army professionalism there you go reform the brandenburg army of course uh you know brandenburg can turn into prussia and and there's a number of achievements to go with with forming an early reich and uh, forming germany and then also forming uh prussia and, and doing some fancy things with prussia like getting a bunch of discipline and stuff like that of course prussia has a, like a, a very strong military uh sort of traditions and things in fact i think we start oh we actually start with brandenburg ideas are these the same as prussian ideas or does Prussia uh, change a little bit when you when you flip? I guess it might change, but you get some amazing stuff in here. Um, construction cost minus 50%. That's actually pretty good. Infantry combat ability, 10%. Morale of armies, 10%. Just some unrest management. Some diplomatic reputation, always good. Um, tax modifier. Uh, the nobility and the, and the burgers like you a little bit more. That's kind of nice. State maintenance. Reduction cost of fabricated claim. Sure. I don't know if we're going to be fabricating too many claims. Would we get so much stuff for free? Oh, we have to own 15 provinces in northern Germany to get the permanent claims on this lower bit, which is which gives us permanent claims on lower Germany, it seems. Oh, lower Saxony, sorry. No, lower Saxony is what it's talking about. 
here. So these uh, lower Franconia, where are these exactly? Yeah, where's the upper? Yeah, these are like way down here. So getting permanent claims on these bits, uh, okay. So where do we get where do we get the just the free uh, claims for like a surrounding area? Is that a thing? I guess we just need fifty provinces here, and then presumably we'll get like claims on the rest of it, right? We have to accumulate some of it by ourselves. We'll get a couple from uh, Newark, uh, Newmark, um, uh, potentially, right? Going for those bits. That's interesting. These actually give us additional permanent claims as well, it seems. So on and so forth. So, so we're going to get a lot of permanent claims, but it looks like we have to we have to work for them a little bit. It might be worth actually just building up a claim there, but I have a I have a feeling that there might be some sort of event or something that will trigger there. We'll just have to see what happens in the opening move section. Uh, let's continue to sort of work on. Um, so we've looked at the missions. We have a good sense of what's going on there. I'm just going to seize land because it's complaining about low crownland. So that's going to get rid of that uh, that issue there go through maybe hit some of these buttons that we typically hit uh we don't need to worry about missionaries or anything like that oversight of the clergy is good it's just 10 influence 10 a loyalty equilibrium that's going to get uh, more influence and then more happiness there with the military here we could end up doing increased levies for more manpower 37 percent it's not bad although right now the influence of the nobility is already pretty high and this doesn't add any of the loyalty equilibrium so it'd make it a little bit harder for that to, to, to be managed there. I'm actually kind of curious. Can we afford um, advisors or not? Not really. What's our what's our uh, force limit? 12? Okay, so if we were to buy up um, some more troops, we'd be just like, we could ba well, we could barely, we could afford one advisor. One advisor. Do we have an advisor that's like particularly uh, useful looking? Uh, maybe a, a statesman would have been good or... or uh, relation uh, relation advisor something like that trade i mean trade's not terrible but right now it's not gonna be very impactful I mean, this is a military dude maybe we get this military dude online that doesn't sound like a bad idea so let's get this uh, let's get this guy here to make the advisor cheaper grab the military guy it's gonna save us a little bit there it's only gonna be 0.75 per month and we should be able to still raise up three more troops to get up to our maximum force limit so we have the money to do that, and then we'll be able to pay them with with, and, and we might want to actually be drilling, with with Prussia. Honestly, we can get an agenda going. Let's see what this is going to tell us to do. Papal state. It wants us to butter up the papal state. Uh, that's an easy one to do. It's not a bad one. We are a Catholic. We are a good God fearing Catholic nation. So it's good to be uh, friends with the uh, with the Pope there. So this actually wants us to change the culture, in one of these areas. The Saxon is is Saxon actually? Wait a second. Wait a, wait a second, what does it want to do? That's interesting. I don't think we're to do that right now. Any own province have a port. So uh, have a port in, in, in the province. Oh, give us a, a, a free claim on... Oh, wow, that's actually kind of neat. Holy cow, that's amazing. Gives us a free claim on these guys. In fact, they've already rivaled us. We're going to have an immediate uh, CV on these guys. We can attack these guys in a month. That's going to be a quick start right out of the gate. They're going to get some allies and stuff, but seriously, that's going to be awesome. Uh, who do we have here? The Teutonic Order. Yeah, they don't like us. We're going to be fighting the Teutonic Order for a long time. Earlier on, though... Um, Magenberg. Yeah, we're probably going to be going going that direction as well. I, I assume we could. What we could try to do is we could try to get alliances with the actual nations here that are electors and try to start building towards votes for that, or we could just try to get an alliance with someone who likely is. Um, what are some of the most powerful electors here? Bohemia could honestly be a great option. Yeah, Bohemia, you know, Bohemia. Oh, Bohemia is not going to like it. Well, Bohemia has rivaled Austria, so that's actually going to not go so well. Because we've got the alliance with with um, with Austria coming in. So that'll be a big. 
That'll be big, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Saxony? Saxony likes us. Um, the Palatinate. I think either of those are decent options. Saxony is probably a place that we're going to want to conquer eventually, but having them as being as an ally for now probably wouldn't be a bad thing. We have the one fort in the woods in Berlin. Interesting that Berlin is considered a woods province. Um... We could mothball this fort, but uh, we could pay for it right now. We could afford it, and I think it's actually doing a service for us, especially if we're going to get into a quick war here. That'll be a good place to fight the battles. So let's keep that. Uh, let's keep that around. I think for the most part, almost we've actually kind of set up the country here. We do need to roll a general. We have our advisor. Our main guy three three two is not particularly amazing. This guy's not particularly good. It'd be good to to, to, to chuck this guy right throw him away but I don't want to lose the prestige if we're going to be attacking these guys uh, quickly what we should do is we should move those guys into a position here let's get a general online hope for the best here not the worst it could have been a 112 could have been much worse these are this is grasslands if we could just fight these guys right here holy cow in one month that'd be perfect uh, let's go back and finish uh, doing the estates for the burgers for the merchants here this would actually get us some yearly prestige, some prestige, and some yearly prestige. At the cost of 5% national tax modifier. Man, I don't usually take this, but I'm tempted to do now. Free enterprise. Once we get a port, it'll let us get the uh, uh, option for cheaper ships. I'm actually kind of tempted to do this. 0.5 per year. 0.5 per year. So it would be decaying downwards. You know, I think we wait for this. We wait until the moment that we're going to swap out. Does this give us prestige or anything? I mean, we'll get prestige from the war, but no, it's just going to give us some sailors and a little bit of uh, happiness from for the burgers. So, yeah, I think this is looking good right now. As sort of the opening here. This is kind of what we can afford. I, I, we're not going to be lowering army maintenance because these guys are going to be attacking right away. We don't want to uh, mothball the fort because... I think that's actually going to be an asset to us in the war. We don't know how many of these guys are actually going to be able to get. Uh, what kind of lines is these guys are going to be able to get? Now, they've rivaled these guys. That makes sense because these guys are really going to be coming for them. They might ally the Teutonic Order. I mean, the Teutonic Order has 12,000 troops. We're going to be building up to 12,000. That's going to be a little bit tough. We will have Saxon, Saxony, but they're not going to want any of this land. I mean, ideally, we could almost ally these guys and promise them like a piece of this land, but I, I, I don't know. I think we're going to have to uh, go with this and hope for the best. If these guys don't get an alliance very, very, very quickly, then we should be good to go. Luckily, these guys are relatively weak and small, so it might be harder for them to build the alliance in that short amount of time because they might have to send their their uh, diplomats in order to build relations and, and, and whatever and stuff like that, and that takes a certain amount of time. This is looking good. Yeah, we have a few achievements that we can go for. Uh, goose, uh, what is it? Goose step or something like that. Um, a fine goose step that you can go for as a Brandenburg, which is where you form Prussia and then you get like 125% or 130% discipline or something crazy like that. And then there's also uh, forming the early Reich. There's probably a bunch of achievements, uh, not a bunch, but there's probably a handful for controlling the HRE or forming the Holy Roman Empire and, and, and things like that as well. So uh, thanks everybody for hanging out in this uh, sort of uh, just getting started, sort of assessing the situation, looking at the environment, trying to plot a course here and, and develop a plan for Brandenburg at the start of the game. In the next episode, we will get get going with some actual opening moves. We'll unpause the game. We'll start rolling um, with that. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.